to the Monday Morning Express. Today we will be Skyping in with Dan, who is on the road in Boston. We know, rather we hope, <laughs> that he's working hard and we're going to get a sneak peek at the collection that he and his son Matt are picking up. We'll also talk to him for a minute about a brand new regular segment we will be rolling out in future episodes of the Monday Morning Express. Sitting in for Dan here in our studio is David Raddy this morning. I'm glad to be here, everybody. Now, we know that many of you are familiar with David and have talked with him on the phone or by email because, among other things, he is the lead man for our consignment program. And on today's show, we'd like to discuss a few of the frequently asked questions that we get asked about our consignment program, as well as sharing some tips to help consigners to get the most out of the program. We hope that it helps you, whether you're currently consigning with us or even just considering doing so in the future. And you know, David, we also have a segment that is going to help ensure that our audience gets the most out of the Monday Morning Express by discussing some of the features in the live stream platform that we actually use to broadcast here our show. And Roland will be giving us this week's product review of the beautiful new Milwaukee box cabs that just arrived from PSC, the second batch of them. But first, let's listen in on project updates. And now for our project updates. In speaking with Mr. Jack Vansworth over to Division Point, we see that final numbers have been set for the third run of the Alco Road Switcher project. Now, last week, we showed a list of the 14 versions they were bringing in. However, we see that there's been a change in some of them. So, just to bring you up to speed on those changes, here we have the revised listings on your screen. We have very few of these left to reserve, so please check our website for availability. Also, we see that a STEAM project, uh, they tell us it's going to be in by the end of the year, is the 484 Northerns which includes the Sioux Line Class 020, as well as the Rock Island 5100s. So we look forward on updating the progress of those as we get a little bit closer to delivery. Switching gears and talking about PSC, Mark Mogensen tells us that the HO scale Great Northern W1 electrics are just about to arrive. And as soon as we receive them, we will do another product review to get some in-depth look at these beauties. Also, we wanted to mention the RF&P Berkshires, the 284s. We're still looking for some reservations in order to get this uh, particular project into production. Take a look at these versions again on your screen. You'll see PSC is looking to produce three different versions from the early to mid-1940s. All of them painted in the black and graphite scheme with the raised cab numbers. And two of the versions they have the lubricators and overfire jets added, which really look cool on these pieces. These models, which would be produced by Boer and Precision, have the potential to really being something special for any collection. So if you want to see these go into production, PSC needs the reservations. So go to the new brass section of our website and get your reservations in. We feel these will definitely be worth it. Now for a North Bank Line update. Ed Austin has sent out the pickup notices, and in the next few weeks, we are expecting in the Great Northern 01 Class 2A2 project. Again, built by Boer and Precision, we anticipate another great looking set of models. The different versions are going to include some in the glacier green, while others are in the black factory paint scheme. There are a few of the separate auxiliary water tenders available, which look really nice with atta when attached uh, with the loco and tender. So as soon as we receive these models in, we will get some photos posted right here on the Monday Morning Express. But now, as we mentioned at the outset of our show, we want to give you a little informative segment on our broadcast via the live stream platform. We really appreciate all of our viewers and the use of our live stream platform for hosting the Monday Morning Express. In fact, with nearly 250,000 total views, it is quickly becoming popular among a lot of people. However, since this is such a new platform, we wanted to give you a little tutorial on how to get the most out of your experience and interaction with the show, perhaps some things you may not know. To find the Monday Morning Express on Livestream, simply enter livestream.com forward slash 
Brass Trains in your address bar. There you will find our Brass Trains channel. From here you can get updates on our product videos, the Brass Expo, and of course, the Monday Morning Express. Also on this page, you have the option to download an app from the App Store to play on your mobile device or even using Roku to watch it at home on your television. It's easy to share our page by clicking on this arrow icon or follow us by clicking on the follow button. Of course, to like or leave any comments, which we encourage, you need to create an account at Livestream.com. You can do so by logging in here. At the bottom of each channel thumbnail, the total posts or videos are listed along with the total channel views to date. So to access the Monday Morning Express channel, simply click on the channel icon. You'll see in the main section of the page under the Monday Morning Express title and description, a way to receive notifications of upcoming episodes by clicking on the Get Notified button. Then you will never miss a moment of the show. From here, you will notice all the episodes on the right hand side of your page. If for some reason your device doesn't show this channel list, simply click here to expand or collapse this list. Clicking on the About icon on the same right hand panel will briefly show information about the Monday Morning Express channel, such as where it is filmed, when it airs, and what it's about. Again here you also see a share button to let your friends know about the Monday Morning Express webcast. Lastly on this panel, there's a like button. Go ahead and click this to let us know how much you enjoy the show. In this section, you can see the episode number and run date in the titles, how long ago it was posted and the current view count since airing underneath the title, and the run time of each episode on the top left hand corner of the icon. To view an episode, locate the one you would like to watch and click anywhere on the title or thumbnail icon for that episode. Once you click on an episode to watch, it will automatically begin to play. You have many of the same options as before on the top right hand corner of the video. You can like, share, or comment on this video, which we encourage you to do. Remember, you must create an account or be logged in to like or comment on an episode. Also, by clicking the information icon, you can see the episode details. To expand the video to full screen, click this icon so you can get the best viewing experience. Lastly, click on either directional arrow on the sides to watch the previous or next episode without having to change screens. We hope this informational video was helpful to you and improves your viewing experience for the Monday Morning Express. Today for our behind the scenes, we're going to take a look at what goes into handling consignment items. That's right, Roland. We're really proud of our consignment program and believe that it's the best in the industry. Before we get into the consignment process, I wanted to answer some of the most frequently asked questions that we get about our consignment program. The first question that I tend to get asked is this, how much money am I going to make? And second is, when am I going to get paid? The answers are pretty simple. Depending on the payout method that you choose, you will net 75% of whatever we sell your item for. We take care of any credit card fees and we process and send out checks at the end of every month. And Dave, I know that many of our customers make use of the layaway program that we have. What happens if a consignment item is sold through layaway? If one of your items is sold through our layaway program, you'll be paid 90 days after your item has sold or earlier if the layaway gets paid off sooner than expected. Okay, and I know some folks have uh, concerns about the program. For example, uh, other companies may charge a slightly lower fee or some may not like the idea of not getting paid right away when an item sells on layaway. But it's important for them to know that with how they market their models, combined with the layaway option, we strongly feel that they can net more in the long run by consigning with us. Absolutely. One of the things that I appreciate is that we treat our consigned items exactly like our own stock. We work very hard to find the perfect combination of pricing an item fairly while at the same time selling the item in a short period of time. 
Yes, and of course, what we really feel separates our consignment program from others out there is the excellent reporting, which allows the consigner to give input as well as to check the real-time status for each model. After we carefully examine a model, test it, and thoroughly research the value, we list it. Once the model is in the system, if the consigner wishes, they'll have the option to approve each piece before it goes live on our site. If for any reason they may have questions about the listing or concerns about the price, they're welcome to give us a call or to send me an email. Very nice. And Dave, uh, what happens once a consigner goes through and approves an item's uh, sale price? Once the item is approved, it goes live on the site and a notification email is sent out. At this point, our consigners can monitor all of their items and are notified when an item sells. They can also clearly see when payment is sent. Very nice. And let's say a model has some minor cosmetic uh, deficiencies or, or running issues. What then? Well, minor lubrication and cleaning, we take care of. However, for our consigners, we also offer a repair service. While our consigners may be liable for a small repair charge, we feel that this service really helps to maximize the value of their items, as they'll obviously have the most value if they're in excellent running condition. Very nice. And are there any payment methods other than, let's say, checks, which are available to them? Sure. Well, we offer payment by check, PayPal, or money wire. Or you can even use the funds for store credit with us towards future purchases on our site. Yeah, quite a nice option. Thanks, Dave. Is there anything folks uh, need to know before they begin to send their models in? There are a few things. It's important to note that we accept consignment models not only from the U.S., but from our international customers as well. We also need to receive a basic list of what you want to consign because all items need to be pre-approved. And it's very important that the items are well packed and fully insured so as to avoid any damage in the shipping process. Feel free to ask us about this as we're happy to provide packaging tips. Yes, in fact, uh, we wanted to mention that in the near future, we're going to have a video online that will aid them greatly in this packaging process. Uh, one more question though, Dave. Uh, when a consigner sends in a list of what they have to sell, uh, what are some of the details that they should include in that? Simply put, the more details that are included, the better. Digital photos are always a great help. Additionally, anything that's different about the model. Is it custom painted? Has it been weathered? Who painted it? Do you have any provenance about the history of the model? Does it have DCC, sound, or lighting? Is details like this that will really help us to help our consigners to get the most out of their consignment sales. Hey, thanks a lot, Dave. We really appreciate that. Well, we hope this uh, perhaps helps answer a few of your most frequently asked questions and helps you to see how consignment with BrassTrains.com can be a great option. All right, here we are inside with another product review. This might look a little familiar. Uh, this is the Milwaukee Box Cabs. We talked about uh, these models a couple of weeks ago on the Monday Morning Express, but now we have the final part of the shipment in from PSC of these beauties. As you can see, these are the maroon, orange, and black versions that we now have available. We received a lot of models because we get a lot of reservations, and so you're going to notice these on our website. Most of these are already spoken for, but we do have a few of them left. So make sure to go ahead and see what we have listed and get your uh, orders in today. Now, some of the things that we just wanted to highlight about these models. And first, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, really give a, a kudos out to PSC because they're one of the few importers that include this particular uh, a certificate, a piece of paper, which outlines the details of the entire project. Uh, not only does it have uh, specifics on each model along with the item number, but they've included in there the quantity in the run, which is very important. Uh, the brass guide is uh, something that's important to us here at BrassTrains.com, and it helps give a history of the models, uh, how many exist, that how much it's, it's worth, uh, especially when it came out, the MSRP. So that's just something I wanted to highlight there that we certainly appreciate from uh, Precision Scale, and we'd like to see that with other importers uh, doing that with their models too. Now, looking at uh, this particular model here, this is the EF3, it's an ABA unit, and uh, 
you'll see that it's, uh, as we mentioned, in the maroon, orange, and black uh, paint scheme. Uh, this is a 1950-60 version. It has the, uh, the uh, red uh, Milwaukee Road Herald, as noted here. Uh, road numbers E27, A, B, and C for this particular unit. Now, some of the features that we saw that this one comes with is, first of all, as you probably hopefully have saw when we were testing this model, these things run great. Uh, nice and smooth. Good job by Boor and Precision uh, in building these beauties. But uh, the models ran nice and smooth coming around the track or on our radius here. And uh, they, it comes with the complete lighting uh, forward as well as the, the reverse, uh, cab interiors, uh, headlight markers, uh, even the electrified pantographs. And something that we really appreciate we've seen here, this is the first time we've seen this technology, is in these pantographs, uh, they're actually very smooth in their operation. Uh, when you push them down, there's a magnet that actually catches them. So these are kind of like able, be able to put in place exactly perfect each and every time. Unlike the previous versions that we've seen, you've always had difficulty in pushing those uh, pantographs down. And of course, uh, it has the nice uh, motor partitions, so we don't see it on the inside of uh, the models themselves. So that's a really nice feature that we've seen. And uh, something else that uh, we wanted to mention was these electrified uh, pantographs. Yes, they actually work. This clear story roof has a little micro switch in the very front that allows those to uh, be engaged if the pantographs were extended. So nice little feature. Uh, you know, we know we've seen that before, but sometimes that little switch is hard to find, but it's right there in the very front of that. So that's what we have here with uh, this particular uh, product review on the Milwaukee box cabs. Again, nice job from Precision Scale in developing these and delivering these. And of course, Boo Rim Precision uh, in the fine quality of craftsmanship uh, with this particular project. So take a look on our site at brasstrains.com. See what we have left. If we have a couple of left, I would snatch them up right away. This is going to be a nice collector's piece. So I was uh, out here in Boston in the cold with my Monday morning express cup, uh, Skyping in with Roland and Dave, nearly dying, people looking at me kind of weird, you know what I'm saying? Like, why is this guy trying to Skype in the middle of a snowstorm? And then I'm showing off this beauty, hoping I don't get mugged, you know what I mean? So, apparently after all this, skipping breakfast in, in this beautiful city of Boston, which I do love, although more in the uh, summer, um, I get to go back inside where I was nice and warm in the first place. So anyways, this is uh, to you, Monday Morning Express. All right, so now we're back inside. Hey, Dan, how's it going out there in Boston? Much better now that I'm inside. You know, as you've seen in that little video, all I brought with me was that sweatshirt I got in California, this hat, which seems to have the same effect on my face as a funhouse mirror, and then, of course, these gloves that I got in Florida, which apparently are for gardening because they have absolutely no effect to keep cold away from my hands. So wow. I was pretty miserable, but now I'm feeling good. Got my cup of coffee hey, inside you know the hotel. Hey, we're feeling the same way here. I'm asking the guys to turn the AC down in here. But yeah, at least yeah. I got a cup of coffee, too, so we're good. Hey, 20 years in Florida makes a guy unable to deal with the cold anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, hey, uh, tell us uh, a little bit about what's going on there in Boston. Well, uh, we finished up our job yesterday. It was a little nicer yesterday, actually. Nice collection. Uh, a lot of, I think we alluded to it earlier, but a lot of New York Central items, uh, several custom painted, extremely professionally done, some with sound and DCC installed, but again, very professionally done. And then a lot of late run, there's a little bit of Glacier Park, there's some late run key, uh, some nice pieces, the guys are going to like it. Also some very nice uh, bridges uh, from Overland and a few other companies, so we'll get that listed just as soon as we can, and, and I think our customers will appreciate what we brought in. Any chance of a sneak peek at the collection? 
I'll give you a little picture. Okay. Hopefully that came over and you can show the guys. Sounds good. <laughs> Very good. Hey, before we go on to the next thing, I wanted to mention, you know, in your video at the outset, it looked like you were on a merry-go-round. Yeah, that's because I was spinning around because my brain froze and I had the inability to stand straight. <laughs> I thought it might warm me up. Yeah, oh, very cool. Hey, it looks great. Hey, we wanted to talk for a minute about an upcoming segment on the future Monday Morning Express. Let our audience in on that. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, we're going to talk about the history of brass model trains. Probably the number one feedback and request we've gotten from the audience so far on the show and we're going to approach it not like in chronological order, but try to every week have like a little segment where they get to see, uh, learn about the history of brass model trains, not just like examining a model, but examining the craftsmen behind it, the employees that help build these things, uh, what goes into advertising, what goes into the data packages. I think there's so much in the history of brass and even what goes on now today that a lot of us probably don't fully appreciate how much really goes into these models. So I think that segment is going to be great. We're going to get some collectors involved. Uh, we're going to get not just importers, but others who have uh, become experts in that field. So I, I think it's going to be something that everybody really enjoys. I know I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's something that we, uh, we think will be a really cool segment uh, here on the Monday Morning Express. So we're looking forward to that in the future. But hey, Dan, before we let you go, we wanted to take a look at uh, this week's Mail Time segment with you. Okay, right. and so with that, we actually have three of them we're going to, to look at here today. Uh, the first one comes uh, from Anthony out in uh, California, and Anthony writes, Brass Trains Crew, I love the Monday Morning Express. I think it's exactly what our hobby needs to help spread the word about what makes brass models so special. He comments, I'm not an operator, and truthfully, I don't even display my models. They are all neatly packed in their boxes in my closet. However... If I want to take one out to look it over, my favorite way to do it is to take photographs. I love photographing all the fine details of brass models, and I have easily spent an hour taking pictures of a single model. And of course, uh, we're seeing those across our screen as we're talking here. And boy, from uh, one guy who likes uh, nice, good pictures to another, uh, Anthony sure did a great job at those. Yeah, nice job, Anthony. Those photos are beautiful. So. Um... I think they make the model really come to life the way he shoots those. So keep up the good work. We love seeing that. Yeah, it's a, it's a Glacier Park model. It's a Denver Rio Grande M75 as we're seeing there. So, but just some exceptional detail uh, on, that piece, on that piece. So uh, we agree with you. A great model to take a look at. All right. So, Anthony, we'll get you your mug out to you. <laughs> and then uh, our next one, of course, comes from uh, Adam. Uh, he says, hey, guys, really an awesome job with the show. I am enjoying it immensely. How many parts are in a normal brass locomotive? That's his first question. Secondly, will we be seeing more factory installed DCC and sound in new brass offerings? And of course, he's uh, attached the photos of his Challenger imports at GS4 uh, together with his layout. We see that uh, in there. So uh, maybe yeah, nice layout too. Yeah, it nice is. Nice layout, Roland. I think he did he mention Jeff. Uh from uh, CMR helped build that layout for him, Jeff uh, Springer maybe. Jeff Springer, yeah, very nice. Yeah, very nice. he does good work, I can tell. Very yeah. nice looking, and that model looks great in that setting. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. You know, as far as the uh, the amount of parts, uh, Adam, uh, sure, that's, uh, that's one that we're going to have to do a little research on, of course. Uh, some have printed something about that in the past, but we'll take a look at that. Good question, and maybe we'll have that uh, upcoming episode. But as far as the uh, factory installed DCC and sound, a uh, good point. We know, Dan, we're going to have it uh, on our big boy that's uh, coming in at the end of this month from Glacier Park. We're going to see it on there. And uh, certainly would like to have more feedback from our customers because many are saying that this is something that they would like to see incorporated uh, into future models. So we'll share that with the importers, of course. Yeah, I think the importers have been reticent to do it, you know, but I think we're getting enough feedback that they're simply going to have to. You know, we felt strongly about it with uh, the big boy project. And I know at, at BrassTrains.com, we're going to push like crazy to try to make that something that just eventually becomes standard in these models. Yeah, very cool, very cool. All right, Dan, well, the final, and of course, Adam, we're going to send you out your mug also. And the final one, as we close out our show here today, uh, it actually comes from Carl in Pennsylvania. It's a, it's a little video that we're going to see here uh, showing his, his end scale 
a layout. Nice job on that, Carl, along with some beautiful uh, Western Maryland uh, shays, three-truck shays uh, from OMI, I believe. So we're going to see those as we, uh, as we close out this uh, episode. And uh, certainly we, uh, we look forward to, Dan, for you coming back to the office so that we can get you to get some work done. Back with yeah, us. I'm looking forward to sunshine and warmth. <laughs> yeah, but absolutely. hey, who was that? Did you say that was Carl, his layout? That's that Carl, Carl from Pennsylvania. Yeah, I want to just say shout out on the nice layout. I mean, honestly, I thought that was HO scale. I, I mean, so to pull that detail off at M scale, pretty special. And I think that helps uh, show the power of having a, even an N scale nice brass model because it just makes everything come to life. So great job on that layout, Carl. Yes, he did. And so as we close out the show, Dan, we'll talk to everyone uh, next week. And that pretty much uh, wraps it up here on this yeah, episode. Roland, one, mm -hmm. one more thing. You sure. know, last week we alluded to a special announcement. And so this week I wanted to tell them, well, they're going to have to wait at least another week. <laughs> but we do have something special brewing on the collection front. Uh, we don't like to talk about those things, so the deal's closed. But stay tuned to Future Monday Morning Express because they're going to get the news first on this show. Very good. We'll see you next Thanks, time. Thanks, guys.